In this video we're gonna look at how I took these photos and uh, how I used a lens that only cost me $48 including shipping. The lens in question is this one, the uh, Minolta MC Rocker 55mm f1.7. Uh, it is one of my absolute favorite vintage lenses. It was introduced in 1966 and this particular model that I own was introduced in 1970. And I got it for $40. I've seen them for from $35 to $50 here in Sweden. So in my last video where I talked about macro lenses that I recommend, uh, a few of you mentioned that the cheapest way to get into macro photography is to reverse a lens. And that is completely true. Even though it may not be the easiest way, it is probably the cheapest way. So anyways, this Minolta lens is worth buying if you're only gonna use it for normal photography. The bokeh is so nice, it is pretty sharp at all apertures and it has a really nice character to it. I really love this lens and for $40 it's a bargain. But in this video we're gonna reverse mount it on a camera. And for that we need a reverse adapter. This is something you can get really really cheaply on like eBay or Amazon. It costs around $2 and it's a piece of metal and on one end you have the uh, mount for your camera. So make sure to buy a ring that fits your camera. And on the other side you have the thread that is supposed to screw into the front of your lens. So make sure you have the same diameter there as on your lens. In this case it was 52 millimeters, and yes it fit perfectly. <laughs> I chose to buy a reverse adapter for Canon because I own Canon extension tubes. Um, but you can buy extension tubes and these reverse rings for any camera model and uh, this lens will work on any camera model. I had extension tubes from before and uh, this is a 36mm one with electronic coupling. You don't need that obviously for a manual lens. And extension tubes you can get them from around $6 on eBay or Amazon. Uh, without the extension tube you would still get a macro lens but it wouldn't be as high in magnification as with an extension tube. And uh, the sky's the limit basically in terms of magnification. Put on more extension tubes if you want more magnification. In my case uh, I first started with this 36mm one and that was enough magnification for me. So I'm using my Sony camera here with a Metabones adapter and uh, as I said I could have just have bought extension tubes for Sony and a reverse ring for Sony but now I happen to have this adapter and extension tubes for Canon so why not reuse them. And voila! Now we have a super macro lens that only cost $48 and as you will see in a moment it takes beautiful sharp photos with a nice vintage look to them. So a really important characteristic of vintage lenses is that you have an aperture wheel. You can adjust the aperture manually without any electronics and that is great when you reverse mount a lens. That way you don't need electronic coupling with your camera and the whole rig will be more lightweight and cheaper. So what is the magnification? When I try it right here you see that yeah, it's probably a little bit above 1x. And that is actually perfect for my use case today. Today it is really rainy and grey and dull and I think my best shot at taking good photos would be to like photograph raindrops and around 1.5 times magnification would be perfect. This is the cap for the back of the lens and if I would have had more time today I could have put this on and made a hole in the middle of it to make like a nice protector for the back of the lens. But now I was in a bit of a hurry so yeah I just left it without that. And here you see what the lens sees uh, with 36 millimeters of extension tubes. Looks quite nice right? The bokeh is nice and the lens seems to be really sharp. Uh, the aperture here is, uh, I think, f4. So yeah, let's go out and try this and see if we can take any aesthetically pleasing photos with it. I'm in the middle of a move, so I had to go to the attic to fetch my umbrella. 
An umbrella like this that is transparent and super big is really great for photography in the rain because uh, there is a lot of light that shines through so you don't miss out on any light and you can basically stand with you yourself and the camera under the umbrella which is super nice. The main target today is water drops. Uh, everything else is dead and boring and there are no insects or anything but water droplets can look pretty nice uh, when you photograph them really up close with a macro lens so that is what I will attempt today. I apologize in advance if a lot of the photos look <laughs> very similar but this was what I had to work with today. Also I couldn't bring a flash because my flashes are packed down somewhere in the attic and I couldn't find them so yeah I had to do with natural light. But as you can see this lens performs beautifully and uh, you get a certain vintage look to uh, it all. I don't think it has too much to do with the actual lens construction, but of course a little, but it has probably more to do with the coating. Uh, the coatings on these 70s lenses uh, is not nearly as good as on modern lenses and therefore the contrast is a bit lower, uh, especially when you shoot towards uh, light. Uh, but you get a certain nice vintage look to it, uh, a, a little bit of a milky look that in some cases I think can be really beautiful. It brings out that 70s feeling from your photos and uh, it's really cool to combine this with macro photography and you get a look that not many other people have in their macro photos. I tried a few different shutter speeds and uh, the lowest one that still gave me pretty sharp photos was 1 250th of a second, so that was what I went with. And to, in order to get enough uh, light, I had to use an aperture of uh, f4. I tried wider apertures as well, but then the depth of field wasn't really deep enough to get nice photos. So, uh, with a shutter speed of 1 250th and an aperture of f4, I had to set the ISO at 200 uh, to 400 to uh, get the whole equation to go together. But uh, I still got nice photos without too much grain, so that was nice. I took around uh, 500 shots in total and maybe 400 of them were out of focus or bad in other ways and uh, yeah in the end a few of them I think came out really nice. My absolute favorite photo today was this one of these two drops and some other drops uh, in the background. I really like the composition and the colors of this image. Uh, I like the toned down colors. Super happy with that photo. A drawback with building a lens from cheap parts <laughs> that don't fit that well together. Um, I mean, they don't fit that well together when you buy them for $2 and $6. Uh, a drawback with that is that when you're out in the rain and photographing, you will get some water into it. Uh, it will not be very well weather sealed. So I actually got some fog on the front of the lens. But I still think that maybe added a bit to the character of the photos so yeah you can always find something good with everything right and as we learned from my previous video where i was in the same forest photographing ice droplets you get the nicest results when you photograph the droplets with the uh, light coming in from the background against the sky like this. I think yields the nicest results. That's a good rule of thumb when you're photographing water droplets or ice droplets with a macro lens. Try to get the sky in the background and preferably even the sun. Then the light shines through the droplets so uh, you get nice reflections and you get a lot of light in your photo that makes for a better contrast and a more beautiful result. I 
I like how the water forms like an almost elastic bubble around. How it is almost like a skin. I like how you can see the center of the pine cone in the background of this shot and how the light comes in from the left. It's always better with a sky. If you liked this video, please don't forget to subscribe. You can find my photos on Instagram or on 500px. My name there is MWRoll. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for leaving a like on the video and see you very soon again.